in the in the next exercise what I what I want to do is start to show you a degree of control okay so right now what I basically did is I showed you layering logic in yesterday's exercises and that created these really interesting morphologic um, but but abstract volumes that we then took and applied as a set so we took a morphologic sequence and we applied it as a set into a box morph principle right so um, still the box morph right now is kind of generally speaking pretty simple so what I'd like to do is just show you how it can be used on a bit of a grander scale so the first thing <clears throat> the first thing I'm gonna do is um, set I'm, I'm going to show you how to do things with a high degree of control. Um, so let's turn all this off, and we're going to start with a, a bit of a new exercise here. And what I want you to do first is um, generate a grid of points. And we can do that in Grasshopper using, obviously, a grid. <clears throat> um, yeah, let's let's use a grid. And in this case, I'm going to use a triangular grid just to change it up a little bit. Nothing special. It might it might come back and bite me, but I'm not sure. Um actually, do I want to use a triangular grid? Yeah, I'll use a triangular grid. Um <clears throat> so with that triangular grid, just uh, drop in the sliders like we usually do, and if you want to relocate it away from the exercise we did before, so you can turn it on and off, it's as simple as um, just moving the base plane with a point to another location. So if I put a point over here, and then I reference that point in, like this, um, I can plug the point into the plane, and it moves my triangular exercise right there. Is that clear? And then my sliders, again, I'll just do 0 to 10 for all of them. So 0 to 10, keep it simple. Something like this should work out fine for me. <clears throat> All right, and um, from this, what I'm going to do is start to modify the list of points. Okay, that's really important to understand. Um, the, the list of points output is right here, and I want you to be aware that because... Um, let me see here. We have cells, rows of six... Six, 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 yeah, okay. One, two, four, five, six, yeah. Um, so, so basically what we're going to operate on is the points, and we're going to use the closest point way of um, measuring in order to generate sort of a new position for those points. So I'm going to make a vaulted presence for this particular trigrid, and then I'm going to remap it. So um, let's start off by, you know, you can grab... Oh, that gives you the center point, doesn't it? Oh, that's not what I want. All right, so then we're going to have to break apart the cells. Sorry, I didn't anticipate that one. I haven't. I don't use the trigrid that often. So get a deconstruct BREP and plug the cells into the deconstruct BREP. And um, this one right here, it's uh, called cull point or cull duplicates, and it's found under... Uh, vector and point right there, cold duplicates. There's a cold duplicates for lines too, I just want you to be aware of that, but what cold duplicates does is it deletes any coincident point within a certain tolerance. So when it says coincident, that means that it exists in the same location. There are two items that exist in the same location. Um, and the tolerance just determines how far apart they can actually be before it deletes it. Um, so what we're going to do is take these vertices as a flattened list. 
flatten it out. Actually, don't flatten it here. Yeah, don't flatten it here. Then um, call duplicates and flatten it on the input. I'm not sure if I'm going to need those points later. So when we had originally 180 points, we now only have 42. And those points look like, oops, these. Any questions so far? Nothing special, right? All right, <clears throat> let's move forward a little bit. Um, so we're going to take these points and measure their um, position relative to where I put an attractor point. So let me go back into Rhino, and I'm going to put a, an attractor point somewhere in the center, like this, and I'll reference that point into Grasshopper. And again, in Grasshopper, now I'm going to go through the process of measuring its distance relative to all the other points. So I'll go to Vector and Point, and I'll use Closest Point. And the singular point, remember this one is a little bit uh, backwards here. The singular point goes into C, and the multiple points list goes into P. And it should give you your distance values right here. And Eric was having some trouble with this one before where the numbers weren't changing, and I still can't figure that one out. So just slide this around a little bit to make sure your numbers change. <clears throat> okay, um, so these distance values have to be remapped into a new value and then we're going to use that to move the points okay so we're, we're sort of just doing the same thing we just did before but we're doing it slightly differently so um, the way I'm going to do that here is by going to math domain remap numbers and the values I'm going to remap are this the source domain is going to be measured using bounds. And then the target domain is going to be generated using construct domain. And you can set those numbers here with a slider or something else. Um, I'll use something like 25, uh, 25 to 50. Think, or you could even just set it to 0 to 100 or whatever and then just start with 25 to 50. So I'll put it somewhere around 25 and somewhere around 50. Simple enough so far, right? Nothing new. <clears throat> um, and then at this point, we're going to use move. Um, right now, I'm still going to move it in the direction of the z-axis because this is an abstract exercise. So I will, um, under vector and vector, I'm going to grab my unit z. And then... I'm going to use transform Euclidean and move. So those remapped values are going to be my um, multiplication factor for unit Z, which is going to plug into the translation vector of move. And then, of course, the geometry that I'm going to move is going to be the uh, points themselves. And those points are not this point right here. It's going to be, um, I'm going to pull it off of this, but that point right here. So let me ask you a question. Why did I put this right here? Why did I use that? Anybody know? No? 
So, all right, I'll just jump right into it. So I put that point there because, like I said to you while we were, you know, discussing off, off record here, um, these params are empty housings. So the cool thing is if I am... If I find myself in a pickle where if I plug this in here, it's going to be crossing through a bunch of different other components and it's going to get really confusing, I can use this to reroute and redirect where that wire goes. And it's the same information, but I can just plug it in like that and have it look a little cleaner. Just wanted to throw that out there for you guys. Okay. So anyway, um, I've got the geometry moved and you can see that it's kind of creating this reverse parabolic, um, you know, concave parabolic uh, structure here. Uh, we are going to start working with this in just a moment, but I'm going to stop the video here at this point. Are there any questions? No? Okay.